In today's video, we will be launching an EVE communication network so that we could once again land a probe lander on EVE and retrieve all the wonderful science. So we will be tackling the launch, the transfer window and of course the deployment. So let's get in. We are taking again the same land launcher as we did previously for Duna and that one is very very similar to the Falcon Heavy and look how it goes it even uses the Ghidorah tanks and it is powered by 29 Marlin engines yes beautiful look at it how fast it goes up okay so with the launch being said let's accelerate it to two and a half time acceleration so that it doesn't need to take ages yes video is already long enough but as said curb into eve transfer window this has been launched as you can tell by my kermal alarm clock even before we have managed to deploy the communications network around duna but i decided i would bunch up a whole the story together and let you guys enjoy so with that thing, be, thing being said uh, this craft has been a little bit launched after 72 days prior to the Duna Explorer coming there. Okay, the plume is coming up. I'm actually reducing my throttle because my thrust to weight is already high enough. And soon enough we will be taking up the stage separation in 100 meters per second. And here we go. Deploy. Good. I'm thinking we're going to go with the 100 by 100 apoapsis or apoapsis and periapsis and that will put us in a very nice uh, orbit so that we can eject towards eve within the period of the next 57 days a total burn will be 1305 meters per second and we have 2025 so more than enough within this center stage thrust to weight is really significant it's 2.23 so that's more than enough so let's just deploy the fairing followed by the deployment of the solar panels and of course the antenna because this probe is unmanned so once again we will be doing everything with the time delay and uh, and the flight computer there we go circularization burn in effect and there we go it looks beautiful i just love how the waterfall looks it's, it's just amazing all right as you can tell we are using the flight computer for all the possible maneuvers and guys at the time of this recording this episode uh, or at least the audio it has been one day post patch since ksp2 so I'm loving KSP2, there will be a lot more coming and I'm working on a very special video which, hint hint, will be a comparison of few games, so hope you will enjoy that one. It should be coming out soon enough. Alright, so with that thing being said, let's control from here and we're gonna call it EVE Exploration or let's say EVE Large Explorer. Yeah, we want to rename it because, well, now let's plan the maneuver burn and that would be happening in roughly one year and 294 days well you know what yes i will actually do the burn and the burn should be going in the 23 seconds so we are already ejecting and since the five since 10 seconds ago a uh, one year and 294 days have passed yes time flies when you're having fun all right yeah i did the, a big time skip so that you guys could enjoy this uninterrupted footage of us going willy-nilly and leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence for eve right all right so there is a minor correction where i want to be performing the eve correction burn there we go just to make sure that we take care of that one and ensure the eve periapsis we have an eve encounter so i have actually booked, booked a small correction so just before entering the eve sphere of influence mainly so that we could adjust its arrival point we don't want to come come high into the orbit we do want to come equatorial and pretty close so with that thing being said, since this is going to be a remote controlled thing i'm going to do now that i'm going to select one antenna will be pointing towards kerbin and another one will be pointing to its medium range relay mainly because just in case that the relays are in highly polar elliptical orbits and if it goes too high up i want to make sure that we still have connectivity look at it go beautiful isn't it all right so with that thing being said we are leaving the kerbin sphere of influence and 
hopefully soon enough we will be going to eve oh i forgot some science we do have the science alert now so it will be going blah, 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 every little second when we have some new science to do okay with that thing being said let us now perform let us take a maneuver node that will take us nice and equatorial to eve where our probe is already sitting the one that we launched a couple of episodes ago if you have missed that then do check it out in my playlist uh there are actually a lot of videos and a lot of you guys have been commenting oh please continue the series well usually on the end screen there will be a link to the new one but in case you miss it go to my playlist section and you will see the remote tech heavily modded playlist which will contain all of the episodes that you might have missed thus far there's a lot of them i will actually put the link to the list also in the description of this video so you don't miss out all right and while you're already there do fling a like at this video if you find it informative and helpful and if you want to be staying up to the future content well why not press subscribe all right so we are coming at the eve sphere of influence and uh, our maneuver node burn will be 305 meters per second we have already queued it up we are lined up for the maneuver and we should be hitting the gas or actually flight computer will be hitting the gas because our time delay is 29 seconds so that's 30 seconds time delay Yes, once again, we are performing everything with time delay. I'm actually enjoying playing with time delay because it gives me that sense of realism. And I think, I don't know if the KSP2 will have an option to have a time delay, but I think it would be super cool if it was like a toggleable difficulty option in the settings. So devs, if you're seeing this, please check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And I'm actually going to leave it into highly elliptical orbit, something like this, so that almost equivalence to the gilly sphere of influence because i do want to fling one of my probes towards gilly right so it gives us the 244 meters per second burn especially if we go and we will be performing that burn in three days two hours and whatnot all right, I have my experiments out uh, just in case that some wonderful experiments pops up. And usually it's a gravity scan because it's biome dependent. And Eve is rotating underneath us. So if we come across a biome we haven't yet visited, it pops up. There you go. All right. So there will be a few interruptions uh, if you don't mind but uh, let's just now enjoy and appreciate the arrival towards eve where we will be performing the orbital insertion burn if the purple mistress she is so beautiful okay and there we go three two one and ignition we are performing orbital insertion and we will be going to orbit around Eve. there we go beautiful Right. Oh, look at that purple and green glow as the sun crosses the eve's horizon. Whew. Amazing. Right. Okay, so that being said, now we have we have no connectivity. That's a downer. So now when we have connectivity, we have to plan our maneuver nodes and queue them. So just to be on the safe side, let's do it like this. Queue and disable. So there we go. Now, what I want to do, I want to actually decouple one of my landers. And that would be the remote lander that is, well, that's the Gilly lander, so to say. So I want to make sure that I decouple it, because I will be sending that one to Gilly. Alright, queuing the stack separator, queuing the photovoltaic panels, activating the communitron, so that we have at least something okay so let's just enjoy there it goes opening up the solar panel flinging up the antenna and there we go the whole point of this is that we can maintain communication and the ability to do maneuvers while we prepare everything else so okay lander now what we want to do here we want to set the eve large explorer because this would be a like a relay going there then we have a cute the activation of this good all right okay so now what we want to do we want to wait until this com dts activates 
here we go and now we will have good connectivity hopefully even from Gilly so we will never lost a probe again good and this craft will be staying in this orbit and our large deployer will actually reduce its uh, apoapse and periapsis to be able to deploy the communications network that we will need for our first remote tech probe EVE landing yeah all right there we go let's take a look at how it looks execute the plan maneuver it will be 944.8 meters per second so the reason why i left the lander in the highly elliptical orbit is because it it on its own it doesn't have the delta v to go back to the gilly uh yeah area so burn will be in three minutes it is already queued and we are pointing maneuver prograde so three two one and ignites all right while we're doing that some gravity scan science pops up and we will use every single little ounce of opportunity that we can to actually consume that science because we really need it beautiful all right Okay, so now we are in 540 by 580, so 484 by 450 kilometer orbit, and that's good enough to start deploying the satellites. I was thinking that we should go equatorial, but maybe we don't need that. We can just start as is and try to get an inclination that we want. So let me show an engineer. I want to have the engineer up so it can tell me what is my time to periapsis, orbital period, those are actually really important. So you see, 46 minutes and 18.451 seconds. Good. Some additional science. And now I'm actually gonna make things, ensure that the thing is, the next orbit should be equatorial, more or less. As always, guys, these orbits are not perfect, but if my network is robust enough, it should be good enough for the landing, and I'm hoping it will be. There we go, another EVE's Eastern Sea Science. Let's transmit the data. We are now collecting and reviewing all the data that we can that will ensure us that we get a lot of science experiments done. Good, there we go, decouple. And we will have another burn of 662 meters per second. I don't need this 75. Let's activate the engine. And then we will be ready to queue up maneuver node prograde, execute burn. There we go. Okay, I missed a little bit of science there. It doesn't matter. We are over the explode EMC. Okay, let's kill this maneuver node. I don't need the maneuver node. And let's change the orbital inclination so that we are equatorial. So the first set of, uh, of uh, probes or satellites, relays, they will be equatorial and then another will be inclined. Two of them should go in equatorial, two of them should be at plus inclination and two of them should be at minus inclination, hopefully giving us enough robustness that we can land the lander when the time comes. The lander is also packed within our craft and you can see it at the top of the craft now at this moment it would be the well the bottom of the screen so that's the eve atmospheric lander that you have and probably we're gonna launch it i don't know if it will be in the confines of this episode or the next one all right there we go and now what i want to do i want to make sure that i create a maneuver node uh let me just see let us First Q, oh, I have no connectivity. Yeah, I need to have connectivity, all right. So the communitrons are 32s and that's good because those will actually be able to relay from higher orbits. Okay, so let's activate the communitron, decouple and activate the solar panel, extend one, extend two, extend three, extend four, all right. And now let's enjoy the animation as it does so. Extend, decouple, and start opening up. Come on. One, two, three, four. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So that is the first of our relays. 
So we're going to rename it and we're going to call it Relay Eve Equatorial. And I am butchering because Equatorial is, I don't think it's Equatorial, but okay. And you will be pointing antenna to Gilly because you will also act a real as a relay towards my Gilly lander. Now let's extend your epoapsis to around 650, 670 and it will be 650 or 670 by 670. So, all right. Okay, can you orient yourselves, please? By the way, guys, I have did this with all of my probes. So they were going equatorial, they were going at the plus 30 degrees and minus 30 degrees inclined orbits. The reason why I'm showing you all this videos is because I didn't want to show you the same thing like 20 times as always. So we will do this once. And after that, I might show you one relay and one relay only from the beginning until the very end. So there we go. And that's mainly because that one ha is a little bit of a special one. So yeah, there we go. First burn would be 80 meters per second, just to get us to 670 periapsis, 669, it's good enough. And then at the apoapsis, we're going to extend it to another 669 or 640, 650. It doesn't need to be precise. It has to be good enough. Okay, node and execute. There we go. On the other screens, you will see other probes doing exactly the same. Some of them will fix their inclination at, I think, plus 25 or plus 30 degrees inclination, just to ensure that we have a little bit of robustness in terms of coverage. I have thought about it in case, let's say, my EVE lander doesn't come equatorial, it comes over a little bit at inclined area, then you might get a problem. Okay, so that thing was solved. So this one is actually my last probe and that's the one that I have said that I will be showing you from start to finish. So I did exactly the same. Decouple, enable the engines, enable the solar panels, uh, enable the relay and then we will be putting that one into this inclined orbit. So to do that, I've, I wanted to show you an additional cool trick. I have selected an existing satellite and now I'm fixing my inclination so that on the descending node is like zero zero so you're doing like an intercept in the same way as you would do for any other planetary body or craft that you want to rendezvous with it's a trick guys when you're playing with the remote tech it's an easy trick that you can do to make sure that you have a good enough approach so I'm going to show you it's 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 really cool and that also helps you if you want to have your satellites spaced out in a good way so the first things, as we said, we're fixing our orbital inclinations so that we are at the same inclination as our target satellite. This always works for the second. The first one satellite that you're deploying, it doesn't really matter where you deploy it because it will be the first one. And then you have to align all other satellites compared to the first one. So this is the way how you can do it. All right. So as you can tell now, we have the rendezvous markers, the the basically the orange one and now I'm skipping orbits until I get that one of the top of the orange marker is on one side and the bottom is on the other side while I'm dragging and maintaining that my apoapsis and periapsis will be 670 ensuring that my orbital uh, inclination will be just right. So there we go and I have queued up the maneuver and as you can tell by my pink target marker when our satellite is at the apoapsis, the opposite satellite, the target satellite, would be at its periapsis, which means they will be complementing each other. They will be on the exact uh, opposite sides of the planet, which was exactly the thing that I was trying to achieve. There you go. And beautiful. Look at that. So now you can actually shut down the engines and rename the vessel to be Relay Eve inclined relay four. There we go. So after we deployed, we want to be sending this little guy into the orbit around Gilly. So right now I'm trying to figure out, we have 3072 meters per second relative velocity of Delta V. So I'm now doing a couple of laps until we can ensure that we could do an inclination change and then we will be per going towards Gilly. There we go. 
it's a pretty hefty inclination change and also you know orbital ejection so just to make sure that we have it's and it's a different lander there we go come on eject 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 all right beautiful so that will hopefully secure us an intercept with gilly or actually, yeah, I, I was I realized that I wouldn't have enough on its own for the relay, so my mistake, I was actually doing that with the deployer craft. And the deployer craft, it doesn't matter because that one will actually end up in the polar, uh, polar uh, orbit around Eve anyway. So it is okay that we extrude the epilepsis and periapsis this far. It will actually help us with a further maneuver node, maneuver burns. So remember, you have to do these things in order to be, well, relevant. All right, so there you go, deploying the lander. Sometimes I forget what was next because this, between the recording of video of this episode and audio has been almost like three weeks. I've been very busy ch chunking out the Kerbal Space Program 2 content because apparently you guys like it a lot. If you haven't seen it also, check my playlist section there is a Kerbal Space Program 2 playlist and it has only gone better because of the patch so I will be cranking it more all right so with that thing being said now we want to be doing the burn which will ensure that we get a transfer towards Gilly look at this beautiful now what we want to do is that this vessel should hopefully let's switch to the Eve large explorer probe this one we don't want to keep at the same uh, inclination so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go at the periapsis and i'm gonna try to make a highly elliptical orbit depending on how much delta v i have i really want to go into highly or like almost polar orbit but we'll see how much i can actually tweak it maybe i should do that at the descending node yeah, let's do it like this and then change the inclination. I'm just now fiddling until I figure out something, a good place where I should be doing the burn for the relay. Well, that doesn't look too shabby because if I'm going down that path, I will have per almost permanent, I will have almost permanent connectivity back to Kerbin because this orbit is inclined so that I can go to Kerbin. Okay, good to know. All right, let's do a flip around Eve because we're not going to do the rendezvous with Gilly just yet. That will, I'm assuming that's going to take a while until we line up nicely. All right, so there we go. Let's get around Eve and perform our inclination change. Right, and do the burn. It will be a hefty burn. It will consume the, the most of our delta V. So. And then we'll just need the final push to ensure that we have a very, very nice orbit. All right. And then we, of course, have to take out the big gun. So my point that why I wanted this orbit is the periapsis is 432 and the apoapsis is 2.5 million, which is still within the range of the communitron 32. So there we go. And at the apoapsis, I'm going to burn until I get 2.4 million. So node execute, it's 439 meters per second. And that will ensure that we have almost permanent connectivity back to Kerbin. All right, there we go. Beautiful. Now what we're going to do, we are going to do a 439 meters per second burn and following that I think it will be its permanent orbit from this point onwards because at the 2.4 million we are always within the range of our Communitron 32s. Look at this, beautiful. And look how many we of the small satellites we have, it will perform a permanent robustness and help us a lot in terms of landing on eve but that will be coming in the next episode thank you so for watching and i'll see you in the next one